Spain and Germany, two powerhouses in international football. Recently though, they have been struggling. In the World Cup 2018, Spain got knocked out by Russia in the round of 16, while Germany didn't even get past the group stages. Maybe that's a signal that the old generation's time is up and it's time for a new generation of quality players to come forward. So I thought it would be interesting to create a squad of under 23 Spanish players and do the exact same with Germany, creating an under 23 German team and putting these two teams in a computer versus computer match to find out which nation comes out on top. This video should give us a good representation of what Spain and Germany's team might look like in the 2022 World Cup and beyond, so it should be a lot of fun. If you guys do enjoy these experiment videos, drop a like on the video. Let me know what experiment we should do next and let's get this one started. So let's take a detailed look at the Spain squad first. Of course, every player included in this team is aged 23 or under. Under. Keep that in mind and again if I've forgotten any players do let me know in the comments section and help me out. Sticking with the 4-3-3 formation for this one it was the formation that won Spain the World Cup back in 2012 so of course we're going to use it. Asensio probably the best player in the team he's going to lead the line. Of course, recently Asensio hasn't been at his best, but maybe with Zidane's return, we might see the Asensio who scored in the Champions League final on a regular basis. Up front, you've got Santi Mina, a quality forward playing for Valencia right now. You've got Carlos Soler, who's got great potential as well down that right flank. Again, a really good talent, eager to see how he performs and maybe... You know, some big club could snatch him up. We'll see how that goes. You've got Danny Caballos, Fabian and Rodri in midfield. Caballos currently playing for Real Madrid. Fabian, in fact, playing for Napoli. He's, again, a really, really good player. And Rodri, the Atletico Madrid man playing in the CDM position. A lot of people have compared Rodri to actually Sergio Busquets, and that speaks volumes about his talent. Moving on to that defense, you've got Alejandro Grimaldo, Hermoso, Jorge Mer, and Odria Zola. Alejandro Grimaldo, La Masia graduate, currently playing in the Liga Nos for Benfica. Again, a brilliant left back, so good going forwards. And the same can be said for Odria Zola. Currently hasn't been playing much for Real Madrid, but again, he's got a lot of potential. And this is a team of under 23 players, so definitely there's a place for Odria Zola. In goal is where problems arise for Spain. No quality keeper under the age of 23. Ruben Blanco is okay, but not really the best. We could have included Kempa, but he's 24 and I I didn't want to break the rule of the video, so that's why Kepa is not in the team. But it's a very good first team, apart from the goalkeeper probably, it's a solid team. Moving on to that bench, more talents involved here, Jesus Vallejo, Firpo, Roca, Olmo, Pablo Fornals, Oyar Zabal and Munir El Hadzazi. Jesus Vallejo, of course, the Real Madrid centre-back. Firpo playing for Real Betis at this point. You've got Pablo Fornals, who's helping Villarreal trying to, you know, avoid relegation this season. Oyar Zabal is a quality winger. And you've got Munir, a Barcelona reject, but I feel like he's kind of underrated. Now playing for Sevilla, if I'm not wrong. In the reserves, we've got some exciting prospects like Ricky Puig, who we could see in the future playing for Spain a lot more and also maybe for Barcelona, one of the best prospects in recent times from the La Masia. You've got Brahim Diaz, the Real Madrid man, signed from Man City. You've got Alenia, who we could see playing for Spain very soon. Who knows? You've got Regulon as well, the Real Madrid fullback, and Pablo Mafio, who I think is out on loan from Man City. So it's a very good Spain team. And you know what? I'm going to be putting Ricky Puig and, of course, uh, Brahim Diaz on the bench for this experiment just to, you know, maybe see them in action. I think it'll be a lot of fun, but it's a good Spain team. Let me know, guys, if you think any of these players will make it to the 2022 World Cup. I'd love to know your thoughts. I'm trying to keep the experiment as realistic as possible, so we're going to use the Spain's default tactics. Hermoso, the captain aside, Alejandro Grimaldo is actually the best free kick taker in the team, so he's going to be taking free kicks along with Asensio. You've got Soler taking penalties, and you've got Danny Caballos and Fabian sharing the corner duty. Moving on to the Germany under-23 team, and honestly, my first reaction to just looking at this team is wow. I mean, they've got some incredible youngsters, and Germany are basically sorted for the World Cup 2022 and beyond. A 4-2-3-1 formation is what I've gone for for this Germany team, with Timo Werner leading the line, a quality forward, currently playing for RB Leipzig, already 84-rated, and I'm sure we'll see 
him at a big club very soon. Leroy Sané on that left flank. Again, what a player he has been phenomenal for City over the course of the last few years. And honestly, I have no idea why he didn't play at the 2018 World Cup. He deserved to be there, but in the future, I'm sure he's going to be involved with Germany a lot. Probably the best player on the pitch. You've got Serge Nambry on the right side. I'm sure Arsenal will regret their decision to let him go because he's now balling out for Bayern and I can see him do bits for Germany as well. Kai Havertz in that midfield, another fantastic midfielder currently playing for Bayer Leverkusen. Julian Weigel, the Dortmund CDM. A lot of people consider him the German Busquets, so that's high praise as well. Dahoud, again another Borussia Dortmund midfielder, quality player indeed. You've got the PSG centre back Kerrer who have put in the left back role for this one. Sula and Jonathan Ta in that defence. Sula playing for Bayern. He's been good for them. And you've got Ta as well, a top player for Bayer Leverkusen. Hendricks playing in that right back role. Again, a similar situation to Spain. Muller, who is the keeper for the Germany team, isn't really good. There's no under 23 quality keeper for both Spain and Germany, which does affect their team a lot. But hey, it's still a very good team. Some more talents on the Germany bench. Anton is a good centre back. You've got Klosterman, Max Meyer. He plays for Crystal Palace now, which is interesting. Nehaus, Egestein, Amiri, and Julian Brandt, who's probably the best player on the bench. A quality super sub to have. In the reserves, some more interesting players. This guy is actually Bayern's reserve keeper. He's actually got good potential in career mode, so that's why he's in. Baumgartel, Maya, Eggestein, and Arp. Arp again, the 18-year-old or 19-year-old again has very high potential. So this is the Germany under-23 team. Let me know how many players from this team you guys think we'll see at the 2022 World Cup. Again, to keep the experiment as realistic as possible, I'm using the Germany default tactics. So let's a captain this side. We know how good Sane's free kicks are, so he's going to be taking all the free kicks. Werner on penalty duties and Dehu to take the corners. So that's the Germany team. Now it's time for the gameplay. A computer versus computer match between the Spain under-23 team and the Germany under-23 team. Time to find out which nation has a better future. Let's get right into it. So we've got Spain donning their home kit for this one and Germany playing with their away kit. And I must say, Germany's away kit looks absolutely gorgeous. And there you go. This is the pace from Germany. Timo Werner now challenging Hermoso. Werner holds it back brilliantly, puts it across. Leroy Sané tries to get his head to it, but Odrio Zola was alert. That was actually a good header. Leroy Sané out wide to Kerrer. Now it's Timo Werner. Germany trying to create something. They've been the better side in this first half, that's for sure. The shot's taken, but a deflection straight into the hands of Ruben Blanco. Germany's team has a lot more quality, in my opinion, so I expect them to win this experiment, but this is FIFA. Anything can happen. La Roja on the attack. Carlos Soler shoots. He gets the ball again, shoots, and this time it's in. The Germany keeper cannot stop that, and it's the Valencia man, Carlos Soler, who puts the Spaniards under 20 three side into the lead in this experiment i must say it's against the runner play because germany were the dominant force in these first 34 minutes of this one and spain have had their fair share of luck with this goal as well Guerrero making a big mistake defensively but spain capitalized and it's carlos soler who puts his team into the lead it'll be interesting to see how germany respond spain on the attack now fabian Fabian finds Rodri Namina. Now it's Danny Caballos who shoots and Muller makes a good save. He's only 71 rated, but he's doing a good job for Germany at least so far. Some great build-up play, you know, a bit of tiki-taka there from the Spain team. Resulted in a good chance. I'm a bit surprised with the result at halftime. It's 1-0 to Spain. Carlos Soler with the goal. I'm intrigued to see what happens in the second half. Will Germany respond? Because I feel like they've been the better side in that first half. We definitely need to see more from the Germany attack. Sane, Werner and co have been quiet. Have a look at this. Both Spain and Germany have 100% passing completion. Spain keeping possession so well. They're just not giving the ball away to Germany in this second half. I mean, the Germans aren't going to struggle to get back into the game. And now we've got a chance here. Carlos Soler getting ahead of Kerrer. Cuts inside. Still Soler puts in a good ball. And the header from Dani Caballos is in and the Spain side have made it 2-0. Since the second half has started, only one team has been in action and that team has been Spain. They've been absolutely brilliant. This spell of play was just superb. The great link-up play in midfield and then Soled gets the ball, puts in a great cross. And of all the people, it's Danny Cabeos who runs into the box and scores a fantastic header. And there you go. The Spain team now have a 2-0 advantage. 
and I'm not sure how Germany are going to respond. They've been poor in the second half. Okay, so Ricky Pui just been brought on for Danny Cabellos. I've been waiting to see him in action in this experiment and we'll finally get to see Ricky Pui play. Germany might have a chance to get back in it, but Weigel's shot with his weak foot is wide. That was literally Germany's only chance in the second half. It's 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 a bit embarrassing so far. Oh, there you have Ricky Puig. They're linking up with Asensio. Spain just toying with Germany now, keeping the ball so well. Even these youngsters of Spain know the philosophy. They're just keeping the possession properly and attacking when they see space. Absolutely brilliant display here from the under-23 Spain side. Asensio now finds Ricky Puig. He wants to get involved as well in the attack. Ricky Puig puts in an interesting cross and Weigel just about clears it away. Ricky Puig only 69 rated, but he's been dominating this Germany midfield. It's actually insane. We need to see something here from, of course, Germany. It's Leroy Sané shoots, but that was too easy for Ruben Blanco. Germany's attack has been toothless, surprisingly so, because they've got Werner, they've got Sane, they've got Nabry, Kai Havertz as well. It just hasn't worked out for them. Could we see more from, of course, Spain here as the ball finds its way to Alejandro Grimaldo, puts it in, but Kerrer with the acrobatic clearance. Otherwise, it definitely would have been 3-0. And that's that for this experiment. I did not expect Spain to be so dominant to win 2-0. They were brilliant in the attack. They were brilliant in the midfield. And defensively, they were pretty good as well. It was the complete performance from Spain. And according to FIFA 19, Spain do have a brighter future. Maybe we see some of these players balled out for Spain in the 2022 World Cup. Who knows? But according to FIFA 19, it's Spain who have won this experiment. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed today's experiment let me know what experiment we should do next maybe you know nation-based experiments more often or maybe club-based experiments it's up to you guys to decide if you enjoyed today's video i would really appreciate a like subscribe if you're watching my content for the very first time and i shall see you guys next time